before long, reports reached Bruce's ears of young people engaging in unacceptable behaviour and dangerous behaviour. So this new era of Bruce was backfiring a bit. There's another train coming in, we'll just keep going. Including excessive drinking and drug abuse. To rein in the profligates, Bruce issued a papal bull on the 5th of May 2003, in which he stated that persons who did not accept his regulations would render themselves liable to be excluded from consideration for inclusion in the ongoing arrangements proposed for increased fellowship activity. Bruce's letter came with strict instructions that it was to be read out at care meetings in every local assembly and that each householder was to publicly agree to the terms. This was dutifully done, although many fathers would have been aware that their children had no intention of abiding by the rules. I was in that boat because I'd yarl and here I was trying to go along with this, but he was rebellious. But, uh, yeah, we all go through that bit, a bit of the stage, I guess, in life. But, uh, you know, here I was as a father trying to correlate this awful rule, strong rule, very important, serious rule from Bruce Hales. When he was taking on, taking over the money and the ownership, the Minister of Law Recovery, we were reading out how everything was safe in his hands or all our possessions, property, pretty much was all vested in his name. He's, he's coming out with this stuff as well. Bruce has sent out other written instructions for various codes of conduct, hoping that an arbitrary religious approach will subdue the rebels who apparently aren't reading his ministry or that of former elect vessels. The brethren must wonder whether Bruce has lost his marbles when he expects them to bow and scrape before the likes of John Gadsden, the ex-leader from Melbourne, who was offered his job back after 20 years of freedom from the shackles of brethrenism. John had made his pile when out of fellowship and was free to use computers and whatnot to expand his empire and now he had made his fortune, fame would follow with the hire of the top job in Melbourne and the promise of a few fellowship or three day meetings to make it more attractive. He must have swallowed hard when told about computers because JHS had told him during a visit to America in the late 1970s, you should get one of those. But of course, the Lord has moved on and a lot of things have changed in the last 20 years. Besides, who needs a computer when you can retire on the millions you've made in the corporate world? So that's that. And then the next heading is Reflections. Since time immemorial, the brethren have been inculcated with the dogma that the recovery set on by JMD will go through until the rapture and that they are indeed the true Philadelphian position. Just read about Philadelphia in Revelation 3, I think it is. You know, they are Christ's bride, the perfect position, whereas all the other religions are crap, basically. The only collective gathering the Lord honours today, all other Christians belong to Sardis, Thyatira, Thyatira or Laodicea. It doesn't matter what administrative mistakes they make or how many carcasses get strewn in the wilderness, during their circuitous wanderings looking for the promised land, the Lord is obliged to support them because they have the light, they are the custodians of Paul's ministry, even if they don't practice it. As J.S. Hates once put it, even if the brethren are wrong, they're right. Now that is confusing to the extreme, my wife used to quote that to me, um, and, and John Hales said he was wrong but he was right. That is highly confusing, if you've got a brain. <laughs> If you're prepared to be brainwashed, it may be, un may be understandable. So, but it's confusing because the brethren now might be thinking, well, I'm, Lance Christie is wrong when he's saying he's right. No, I'm a straightforward guy, I just tell the truth. And that's the whole point. So please don't try and overcomplicate anything I'm doing. I have no other motive, I think I can say, than to make sure that the truth prevails. Where I stand in that, is immaterial. We we just we just have to help each other best we can. If somebody reached out to me, like has happened this week and does happen, um, I'm there to help them. Um, but please don't get the impression that I'm doing this with any motive for anything more than wanting the truth to reside. If I ever 
presided at the expense of the truth. I'm gone, I'm finished. I'm on the route to nowhere. So please don't, uh, please just, I just hold my, I just hold myself accountable to the brethren, all the brethren, all 55,000 of them, please. And not just the hierarchy and say, here I am, judge me. Uh, I'm speaking the truth like prophets have done of old, like many brethren have done in recent years, protesting what's going on and being cast out. So, JND left the establishment and wrote the papers, the notion of a clergyman, dispensation of sin against the Holy Spirit, and separation from evil, God's principle of unity. The two basic things which the brethren claim distinguish them from the rest of Christendom. But do they practice these truths? Since Aberdeen, the universal leader, has had unilateral authority to hire and fire ministries at will, with scant regard for evidence of spiritual gift. And the general rule of thumb is that whoever receives an invitation to the universal Levite three-day meeting is the recognised leader for the local assembly he represents. Where is spiritual gift? It has been replaced with natural ability and material success with the disastrous result of widespread miscarriage of judgment and a generation of spiritual paupers. Evangelists are non-existent among the brethren now and shepherds and teachers are hard to find because the local leader should fill that office and would be most upset if somebody else tried to help a needy soul without first seeking his approval. That's exactly what's happened to me. I, I, I'm nobody, but I do believe I preached in the brethren. I tried to do it best I could. But that was stopped. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm a gift or anything, but I did love preaching because I love the brethren. I love, love, I'm trying to do it wider now. I've, I've preached to people who are not converted and I'm amazed at the results. Not that I can convert anybody, but God, the Lord can. Um, so then he goes on. Please think about all these things that this was saying. The brethren have excommunicated multitudes of sinners for minor misdemeanors and separated them from their families and wrecked their lives. They tried to put this right with new broom Bruce, but it backfired and Bruce has met himself coming back as he tries to smother the flames of incensed ex-brethren who have no intention of coming back, but have been incited by the knowledge that now extinguished relationships need never have been severed. Rather than promoting unity, the brethren's warped understanding of separation has led to division and the holier than thou mantra, which has isolated them from the rest of humanity and made it impossible for any godly Christian to join the only right position. What I call a parallel universe. They're on their own, just isolated and saying we are the one true church. But we can't get in there to see all this wonderful system that they're claiming such high ground over so on and so on. this is painful isn't it but very necessary i would suggest it seems that bruce supports the principle of popery because he went on to write as to your concept of popery this is to russell el papa means as i understand holy father this title or expression can only be rightly understood as recognising the position the Apostle Paul was called to, and to which same position JND was separated to and undoubtedly upheld up until the Lord took him. <laughs> well, what Russell says is the spirit of popery is the spirit of the age as to religion. Self-will soon in divine things works itself out to nothing because it cannot hold men together in the things of God. But popery can inform. And so on and so forth. In the perilous times of the last days, the known security of the saints is the doctrine of the apostles themselves and the written word of God, 2 Timothy 3. Teachers may aid them in it, but can never take away each man's own direct responsibility as to what he receives. The devil makes sure the brethren are too busy reading the weekly white books which report every word Bruce utters in the temple for the worshippers to devour with idolatrous rhapsody or listening to the endless rhetoric of elect vessel propaganda dished out by the hand-picked fondies in every local assembly. 
which I suppose I was. You know, I took my ground as being a, one of the fondies that used to read the same scriptures as Bruce did. But I just explored the scriptures. I didn't exactly quote him word for word. But we thought that if Bruce Hales read the scripture in Sydney, that because that's God's word for us, we had to just study that scripture. And he actually drew on very, very few scriptures. He read certain scriptures, time, like Zacchaeus giving away four times what you've taken, time after time. Woman of John 4, the Lord having to do with a prostitute. He read that time after time, after time. And she went and evangelized to her former lovers, or not that they were lovers, but whatever you call them, men, and to come see a man. She was evangelist, but the brethren were stamping out evangelism in the form of the Betchers and other wonderful, wonderful people who I remember fondly, Angus Clapham, um, Leonard Baker, my father, chucked out, chucked out mercilessly. So if we go back to the early days when J&D, FER were around, certainly J&D, there were a lot of evangelists around. And in JT's seniors to start with, until Watson Lee came along, he was a great evangelist. So these, this brethren, assembly administration is destroying the gospel that's what i would say humbly i'll suggest the brothers should think about that one the test of prophetic ministry is that it comes to pass scripture is clear that if a prophet makes a pronouncement that does not come to pass he is a false prophet and you don't have to fear that prophet i was in fellowship with the brethren for over 50 years russell saying and I cannot recall one prophetic utterance of the great men which has been fulfilled. JT Jr. said, follow me and I will lead you to heaven. But the brethren have discovered that following all the rules and regulations he instigated have not made them more heavenly, only more religious, and resulted in decayed, decades of gross miscarriage of justice, the like of which has not been seen before in the history of the recovery. So much of JHS's written ministry conflicts with the stand the brethren have taken under Bruce Hales, review that which JHS said is now taken with a pinch of salt. There's plenty of money to splash around to subsidise relocations that remove to remote places, but more than cash will be needed in the long run to keep people happy. As Charles Baker, the only Sydney expatriate to move to Argentine, found out when he had to return to Australia to keep his family sane. Schooling has become a hot potato for the brethren. When JSH first suggested that brethren should run their own schools, he didn't realise what controversy was ahead. Schools have been closed down because they didn't have government approval to operate. Children have been forced to do their schooling at home because of peer pressure and conflict between teachers who are non-brethren and administrators and or parents have wrought havoc among pupils. JHS ruled that children should complete the full high school curriculum to reach maturity by rubbing shoulders with the world. I remember that. But that this had been thrown out the window with brethren only schools because now there is no world to rub shoulders with. And besides, why bother completing the curriculum if school leavers are guaranteed a job in a brethren business? Brethren children in Australia now leave school at year 11 because the year 12 curriculum is too difficult for the administrators to handle. I, I think that's been corrected now to a certain extent. There's awful bullying going on in the schools. Money doesn't guarantee success and the administrators are out of touch with the grassroots. Of course, for those who can afford private tuition and catapult their children to the top, such as is the norm with the Hales aristocracy, is a different story. It's no longer necessary to confess the name of Jesus to secure a place amongst the brethren, but it is essential to swear allegiance to the elect vessel. School leavers are given jobs at brethren's businesses where there is no need for them to confess their belief. It is now cradle to grave protection. The decline in spiritual growth and zeal for Christ in generations growing up since we are, since the we are the church doctrine is alarming. See, this is so such a different aspect. I remember Phil McNaughton, Bruce Hales' understudy in Sydney, ministering care in every direction. Just trust Mr. Bruce Hales and you'll find care in your family, care in your business. He's so interested in your business. Care financially, care spiritually, care, care, care. Oh, just trust Mr. Bruce Hales 
and you'll be carried through care to the rapture. I mean, what wonderful ministry, but he shoves people out. And there's no provision because of legislation introduced in 1989 via the Stewards Brethren Assembly Act. There's no provision for people like me. So of course I reduce, I'm being reduced from being a family, father of a family in control of the business worth 20 million Australian dollars down to zero now apart from the house I'm trying to cling on to for dear life and business premises on the industrial estate I built having to sell to meet my legal fees. Thank you Mr Bruce Hale, thank you Mr Garth Christie, thank you Mr Roger Edwards, thank you Mr Chris, Chris Dutterheim for reducing me from being a family to destroying my family and taking over my business for the brethren so I suppose as it's in Bruce Hale's safe care and the Universal Business Team Safe Care and the Safe Care of the Local Assembly in Leeds who saw fit to chuck me out and I was the man that had made the money and was doing it because I love my children to hand on to my family safely with no interference from any religion at all and I'm also sticking up for families like the Dallows John Dallow and Barbara are lovely people but what's happened to their fortune? David Smith and Esther Smith from Chesterfield, formerly Sheffield What's happened to the best uh, wholesale office business and the proceeds when they were asked to sell? Uh, now, where, where's that money gone? These are big questions. Where's all the Joyce's money gone in Sydney? All for the testimony, lads. Which wonderful testimony that uh, the brethren are so committed to. Oh yeah, I was committed to it as well until I started asking questions because I was just chucked out. No recognition for all I'd done in building up UBT, no recognition. I'm not complaining because life has its ups and downs and I'm emerging, but uh, I'm not having a moan, honestly. I'm just saying somebody, somewhere in the bed should ask questions. Why has this happened to John Dallow and his family? Why has this happened to James Christie and his family? Why has this happened to Ken Smith and his family? Is it that Bruce Held had a personal grudge of some, against Ken Smith because he asked a question in three day meetings by John Hales in 1962? about separation. If, if that's the reason he's getting his own back, what about Bob Thorncroft? If Bruce Hales is being antagonistic to people because he's getting his own back because they've questioned his father and the separation rule, that is awful to the extreme and it needs to be put right quickly in the Sydney Assembly and needs to permeate right through the whole brethren position. Well I've, yeah, um, I think um, we can I've finished that little um, session now on Russell and sorry about all the rabbit holes that have gone down but I think they've been quite necessary and just to just to um, resume I just I love the brethren I want them to just face up honestly to the challenge I'm I'm actually appealing out of love and respect because you've got of course all this punishing withdrawal 98% of them are wrong and they're all construed to get, I think, and it might be, please check me out, I hold myself accountable, but if money is the motive for running a local assembly or running a universal position, that needs radical change, needs a complete transformation. You do not mix money up with a good religion, a bad religion, a cult, yes, but not a, not a religion, not the holy fellowship of God's son, the brethren claim. Uh, the commercial system exposed by James Taylor, Patton, and I will go over the Sydney care meeting. The brethren out here remember it. Oh, it's a serious matter, the Hales is withdrawal, and it's a complete exposure. The ministers around the world had to be called in because Jim Taylor had taken issue with the Haleses, and we'll go over that in more detail later. But these are serious matters. And I think Bruce Hales is despising the brethren. He's playing a game with you. He's de deceiving you, defrauding you of your money. And we, I trust that the ATO of New South Wales, Australia, will find out where all the money's gone, going back to 1959, and that somebody will stand up and say, look, I know where it's gone, and hold themselves accountable to the authorities as, as per scripture to the government of New South Wales and if need be, certainly I would say, Canberra, uh, the Australian government, because the two are linked. And then of course we can take the whole thing forward to the British government 
and mercifully I've got a part in proceedings there and safeguarding in faith communities. So I will see that matters are brought to the attention of the government, not the legal system, that's been used in a punishing way by the brethren, awfully punishing way, to take money away and doesn't get a look in in the things of God. This is a spiritual battle in the heavenlies. Read your Bible, Ephesians 5 and especially Ephesians 6. We're shining light into dark places and we would be humble but we would like to think that God will clothe us in the armour of light as we do his work.